Hi, Angeli. Thank you so much for joining this podcast episode. Really appreciate it. How are you today? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing absolutely great. I'm super excited to have a conversation with you and talk about the topic we have in our hand, which is like a leadership for women entrepreneurs, uh, mm-hmm. which is like a, we don't see that often, like a talk about it as well. Because uh, most of the time, leadership means like men are doing that leadership work and leadership role all the time. And oftentimes, like a women who... Some of them, like a corporation, they are doing a tremendous job. So the CEO, they are managing the massive team, but we don't appreciate that much often. So we'll be talking right. about that. So before that, I'd love to know more about yourself, like a, your journey into business or leadership. When all started, like a, you decided to be an entrepreneur yourself? Yeah, so I actually started with leadership um, back in 2014 when I first got uh, promoted into my first management position in healthcare. I, I was in healthcare for over 20 years and I got promoted into my first management position. And that's when I really recognized that, um, you know, my journey moving forward is going to be different because um, it required a transition for me to make, uh, you know, to go from being a sole contributor as an employee to mm. now being, you know, a manager and leader of a team. But um, fast forward a little bit to uh, you know, 2019, I had, you know, survived five, six years of um, being a manager and leader in the workplace and, um, you know, learning how to make that transition uh, successfully. And I really decided to pivot from what I was doing um, and really go after what I was really passionate about, which is coaching and mentoring um, others. And so I really decided to, um, you know, start my own leadership coaching business in 2019, really because I wanted to address the gap of leadership development training that I experienced and continue to see um, that really existed, uh, you know, in companies. And um, so that's uh, why I got into leadership coaching. I started working with other women in healthcare management. And then that kind of broadened into working with other people in other industries like tech and project management and advertising and things like that. So that's really how I got to where I, I'm at, where I am today. Um, today, I'm a conscious leadership coach. Um, I've also written two books on mindset, um, and I've also gotten into inspirational speaking. But, but yeah, I mean, I just I do what I do now um, to really help uh, you know women who are um, on an entrepreneurial journey or may who may be uh, you know a leader uh, in the workplace um, really overcome those challenges and struggles that uh, you know I myself went through. Just helping them to get through those faster and a lot smoother than. Um, you know how I did. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, obviously, running your own business it makes it so much easier. Like you can be a leader straight away, right? Like you are the leader, mm-hmm. you can hire your team either for a man or a woman. But especially when you go to like a corporation, when you go through the ladder, it's always like right. hard for especially seeing a woman uh, because they have to prove so much in order to get to where they want. Because the right. roles is like a they given to like a men's in the on the plate like hey, hey this is the rule for you but women have to have like so much they have to do in order to get there so mm-hmm. how how difficult it is for like a woman because you, you talked about you work with like women leaders so how mm-hmm. difficult for any woman to go through the ladder like they they're probably on a starting a low place and they want to get to the higher and be on a ceo cmo cfo things like that but it's really hard for corporate world where it's like men are dominating the kind, kind of uh position so so how, how, right. how, how difficult is it? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it is difficult, um, especially for women, just because it seems like we have more responsibility on our plates in regards right. to, you know, um, having responsibility for our family and thing, and managing our homes, um, as well as, you know, doing that in the workplace as well. And I think just as women, too, because we have such this um, natural um, you know, nurturing nature. And, you know, we just want to take care of everybody else before we take care of ourselves. And yeah. so that's really what I see is the big, um, you know, the biggest struggle. And that can be the biggest detriment to women who are trying to climb that that corporate ladder or be an entrepreneur is that they're, we're constantly putting other people and other responsibilities before ourselves. And so that's why one of the biggest things that I work with with women is recognizing and really changing their perspective 
on, um, you know, prioritizing your self-care. You know, one of the things that I'm often saying is you cannot serve from an empty cup. You know, you need to make sure that you are taking care of yourself, that you are healthy in all aspects, you know, um, mentally, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, um, and physically, you know, make sure that you are at your optimal health so that you are able to optimally serve those that you are serving or taking care of, um, you know, to the fullest as well. And you, and again, you can't do that if you are, you know, not running on no sleep or running on eating really bad food and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's really important that, that we take care of ourselves in order to be able to do the things and function at a high performance level, um, Yeah. So, so as a leader, like, uh, I know, like you mentioned about, you have to take care of yourself, like uh, you have to work on yourself, but mm -hmm. it's just really tough, like, especially for women, like they are like a housemaker as well. Like they have probably their family, their kids and children. And there's another right. role needs to be like taken care of as well. And as well as like, if you work in a corporate, uh, then ob obviously there is a lot of uh, responsibility. How do someone mm -hmm. like uh, get that time for themselves, like uh, taking care of them and everything? Because most of the time, like we see, like uh, people are rushing through their meals, rushing through their day, like uh, they don't have the time waking up late, and mm -hmm. and the day goes by, they don't have the time for themselves. Like uh, how do you can uh, create uh, such a time for themselves? So like if first half an hour is for me, one hour for me in the morning, then I go about the day, then I come back, then later one hour for me as well. To refresh and reflect on the the, uh, the day I have been with. Like, do you use any kind of formula uh, you have or like you help with your clients? Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of um, frameworks that I utilize for that. And, and it's really um, about creating intention and um, recognizing, you know, your role. So a, a huge thing that's kind of missing and the reason why um, people suffer through overwhelm um, suffer from overwhelm and, you know, getting burnt out and stuff like that is because, um, they don't have a very clear idea of what their roles and responsibilities are, especially, um, you know, as a workplace manager, I had, you know, I was so severely overwhelmed and, and starting to get burnt out. And I, I recognized that I needed to figure out, I needed to make, um, clarity in my role and make what I was doing simpler than how it really was. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with, uh, I call it um, creating role clarity by recognizing the hats of leadership. And what I did is I sat down and I really put um, the, the things that I needed to do in my job as well as um, in my home life in these three different buckets. And so um, I looked at, you know, the things that I did behind the scenes, which were really the operational things where you really manage um, the operations and what's going on to make sure that everything is working as expected. And again, at work as well as at home. And then the second bucket was really the in the spotlight, in the spotlight bucket, which is really where your leadership skills came in. This is what people really saw, you know. Um, people kind of fantasize about, oh, I want to be a manager because they make it look cool. Um, yeah. You know, that's what people are seeing is, you know, you in this leadership position, really motivating and inspiring and empowering your team. Um, you also do that at home with your family or people that you impact in your personal life as well. And mm -hmm. then the last bucket is um, what I called in the director's chair. And that was really um, realize, uh, recognizing that you needed to have this ability of seeing the big picture of how things were all working and how they were connected and having the ability to really future cast, you know, look into the future and see um, or be able to tell what kind of things needed to be done in order for you to reach a future goal or, or pursue a future vision. So when I sat down and was able to put these things in different buckets, I was able to recognize the different skills 
than I needed in order to do well in each bucket. Um, you know, obviously doing operational stuff, really managing things behind the scenes is all is a lot of hard skills. Yeah. Um, you know, and then being being a leader, you know, being able to inspire and motivate people in and out of work um, it was really soft skills, really people skills. And then the last bucket of being in the director's chair and really seeing big picture um, and future casting is really um, kind of a mix between uh, soft skills and hard skills. And so when I recognized that, I could see where I was strong and then where I was weak and then focus on, you know, being able to improve in areas that I could. I also recognized that these things really kind of took different uh, aspects of the brain. You know, like um, your hard skills are more of your conscious mind, your conscious brain. Um, soft skills are more subconscious. Um, and so really being able to see that from that aspect as well um, really helped me to better um, categorize things and put them in compartments um, so that it was easier for me to figure out, okay, this is, you know, uh, what is expected of me. These are my responsibilities and also help me to prioritize. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think when you are able to really see things kind of laid out um, and know that uh, try and figure out what your objectives and your priorities are, then it's easier for you to be intentional with prioritizing the things that you need to in your day so that, you know, you are taking care of yourself. Um, you know, you are working on the things that are really uh, important or are really going to move the needle forward instead of, you know, really being uh, overwhelmed with a whole bunch of little things that you can actually delegate out or, um, you know, figure out that they don't even need to be done because they're, they're not of importance to what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So that was, that's one of the frameworks that I came up with and, um, yeah. you know, help, uh, help my clients work through so that they can, uh, really see things, uh, with more clarity. And then the other thing is creating what I call your leader identity. And that is really sitting down and figuring out, um, you know, what type of leader you want to show up as. And again, that's applicable at work as well as at home. So, you know, recognizing that you have control of how you show up in the situation and how um, you want people describing you when they're asked, you know, what type of manager is Angelie? You know, mm -hmm. um, instead of instead of, you know, not really knowing and just kind of letting things and circumstances happen to you. Um, but again, being intentional with kind of creating that uh, leader that you want to be in the workplace and at home and really saying, OK, I want to show up like this. What do I need to do in order to do that? So it's really about, um, again, creating clarity and um, being intentional about about what you're doing. OK, yeah, that's great. So if someone is like it wants to improve their like leadership skills, like a team management, mm -hmm. that's like it needs to be like a done appropriate way. You don't want to be like a boss or you don't want to be uh, micromanaging every single person and they want to leave you. Like there is need to be like a lot of skills in there. So how is right. a woman entrepreneur, they can do that? Because a lot of time, like uh, you as a leader and you're a woman, then obviously a lot of men under you. Uh, and th there is like mm -hmm. a different like uh, when you're managing a woman compared to uh, men, that would be like a different because men probably not going to like to listen to you or like mm -hmm. they think like they know it all or something like a lot of pe uh, people go through the process or sometimes like you're too young and other people are under you like uh, on your leadership ladder. Right. They are like probably like older, they're more experienced than you. Then they probably mm -hmm. don't want to listen to you. So how mm -hmm. you can have like a team management skill like uh, where everyone can listen to you, work together and have the uh, proper culture in, in the company or like a structure you in? Yeah. So um, first of all, is you have to recognize that leadership foundationally is all about the human experience. And, yeah. um, you know, like you were saying, because it has been a male dominated, um, you know, industry of uh, men being in uh, leadership positions, you know, it, it tends to be very structured and, yeah. and kind of, um, it doesn't flow. And so that's one of the things that I always point out to women who are in management positions and also as entrepreneurs, as we have this natural ability to create flow. And um, if you kind of go with it, go with the flow instead of fighting it, 
um, it actually will take you a long way. So yeah, one of the things that is foundational to recognize is that leadership is really about all of um, the human experience. Um, you know, it, it decades ago, um, you know, managers would, would, you know, have this authoritarian dictatorship type of leadership style, but that doesn't fly anymore. You know, mm -hmm. people don't want to be numbers. They don't, uh, you know, they don't want to be um, just, uh, just thinking that they're another carbon copy of each other. They want to be recognized for who they are and be treated as a person. And again, women are so naturally be able to do that because of our nurturing nature. So one of the things that um, is really foundational to the approach that I take to leadership coaching is that you can only lead others as well as you lead yourself. So it's really about self-leadership first that creates that conscious leadership of being able to lead others. So the more that you get to know yourself, you know, the more you develop your compassion, your understanding and your empathy, and then you're better able to connect with the people who you are managing. So your team members, your colleagues, and when you make that connection, that genuine connection, and you start building relationships, you know, that's when you're able to better manage multiple personalities. That's when you're able to better handle, um, you know, problem behavior in the workplace. And also kind of those, um, nuances of, you know, managing older people or managing men, um, you know, those those things that you pointed out that sometimes those can be um, obstacles and hindrances that make uh, managing and leading others really difficult. So again, it's really about recognizing that it's about the human experience, recognizing that people want to be recognized for who they are and not just a number or, you know, uh, just a identical team player like everybody else. And then recognizing that you have to be effective in leading yourself first in order for you to ripple that out and lead others effectively. All right. That's, yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And also, Anjali, I'd like to know, like, before we leave, uh, we're nearly going to end of this podcast. Uh, what would be like your number one advice to someone who's working their leadership journey? Like they're thinking of it, they want to go to the next level and they want to be a leader. Probably they probably one man show or one woman show, like that they starting out their business, probably they want to hire a team, like they want to expand. So what would be like your mm -hmm. number one advice for them? Like they're working on the leadership journey. What the first thing like you would like uh, focus on? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing, especially for somebody who is an entrepreneur is really recognizing and understanding that you and your business have an impact on others, you know, and that includes, you know, the, your team members that you have working for you, as well as your followers, your audience, and especially your customers. So just recognizing that and everything that you do, everything in regards to your brand, everything that, you know, you do as a manager in the workplace, you impact other people. And so you, again, have to kind of um, create the self-awareness and ask yourself, how do I want to be impacting others? You know, am I doing it intentionally to where I'm impacting them in a positive way? Or do I have no idea how I'm impacting people? And I could be impacting them in a negative way. I think that's one of the reasons why we have these toxic work work environments and mental health is such a huge concern right now is because we do have people in leadership um, positions and companies and who are entrepreneurs and business who aren't aware of the type of impact that they're having and are actually having negative impacts on people who then take that from the workplace or take that from, you know, being exposed to somebody in business and they're taking that home and then that's spreading into their neighborhoods and their communities. So that would be my biggest piece of advice is, you know, really recognize that you impact others and really ask yourself, how do you want to be impacting them? Are you impacting people in the right way? Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for the advice. So we are nearly finishing the podcast. So before we log, uh, how if anyone wants to learn more about yourself, your business, where is the best place to find you? Yeah, so I am, um, my website is probably the best place. It's www.oversightglobal.com and oversight is O-V-E-R-S-I-G-H-T global.com. 
You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And all the handles for all of those are at Oversight Global. And um, you can also feel free to email me. And that's Anjali at OversightGlobal.com. Thank you so much for that, Anjali. I wish you best of luck with your business, your personal life. You have a wonderful year ahead. And thank you so much for coming to the show today. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate being here. The pleasure was mine. That's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast episode with Angelica Kapoor today. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and probably learned something. If anyone wants to learn more about her, you can visit her website or you can find her on social media platforms. So until then, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care.